Good morning, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session of Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And this morning, we are going to look at Kamala Harris. Now, Kamala Harris is in the news because she has replaced Joe Biden as the presumptive nominee for the Democratic Party in the United States. Since the crowning of Kamala Harris, we have been hearing a lot with regard to her race and her ethnicity and her nationality. And these are three distinct terminologies which most Americans find it difficult to understand, difficult concept to grasp. What is the difference between race, nationality, and your ethnicity? We've been hearing a lot about Kamala Harris's race and the fact that many African Americans are suggesting that she is not black or if she's black, she is not black enough to represent them or to represent their community. Now, what African-Americans need to understand is that the African-American community is a diverse community in and of itself. And one of the things that, another thing that they have to understand also is that a lot of the slaves that came to the United States from Africa came en route through the Caribbean to North America because oftentimes the slave masters bought them in the Caribbean, right? They were uh, transported from countries like Jamaica and Barbados. So they first went to these countries and then they went en route to the United States. Most of the Black Americans, as far as I know, as far as I'm concerned, did not, you know, move directly from Africa to the United States, right? They came en route through another country to the United States. And that is what most Black Americans need to understand. Another thing, the Black community that many African Americans are proud of, if we should check the descent of many African American leaders, African American teachers, lawyers, engineers, whatever they might be, right, you will you'll check and you'll see that there are some African, some Caribbean, some South American, you know, Puerto Rican, heritage, right? They have some amount of that. Now, I've never seen, particularly during the period of the Obama, when Obama came to power in 2008, we heard also that he was not authentically Black and that he was not authentically African-American because his mother was white, right? And his father was Black, right? Was an African um, person. I prefer to use the word African or better yet, Nigerian or Kenyan or Ethiopian. It's very important that we understand that because when we talk about different ethnic groups um, in Africa, people tend, you know, there are different ethnicities within one nation, right? And oftentimes Americans also do not understand the difference between nationality and ethnicity and race, even though race is a social construct. And may I suggest here that race is a social construct. It is not something that is scientific nor definitive. So people are free, since it's given that it's a social construct, people are free to place themselves with, with you know within whatever categories that they deem appropriate to describe them. And that is what we need to understand. And many people have not yet grasped that concept. So when we talk about Obama and his mother being a white American, what you call a white American and his father being from Kenya, from Africa, then he should be free to embrace whatever culture, whatever race, whatever ethnic background that he wants to emulate or that he wants to subscribe to. We tend to subscribe to the culture of our mother because mothers tend to be better nurturers than fathers, whether we like it or not, right? So uh, children tend to want to, you know, uh, immerse themselves into the culture of their mother. So let us say that Barack Obama, which he was, Barack Obama's mother was white, was white American. And she grew, from all indications, we understand that she grew up with him, with her rather, and also with the grandparents who were also white. Then he's culturally, he's going to be more white than black because he was raised by, you know, um, in, in a family that was the stereotypical white American. Right. So he's going to have that sort of cultural dynamics, that sort of cultural um, deportment. 
So we cannot confuse things here. And oftentimes we must understand that people are not in control of how they came into the world, right? They came into the world by people, by human beings that we often put into a box, right? We've all, we're hearing now that Kamala Harris's, you know, her father, her grandparents, that's her father's uh, parents or as her paternal grandparents are uh, were slave holders, right? Now, what does she have to do with that? The fact of the matter is that we cannot, we have no control, you know, of the lineage through which we come. We can only accept the lineage and begin to improve on that lineage if there were defects of that lineage. And that's what we need to understand. So it's it doesn't make any sense for you to suggest because her paternal grand grandparents or great grandparents were actually slaveholders, it means therefore that Kamala has that sort of propensity. It does not mean that. And we need to understand that. I'm no fan of Kamala Harris, but I need to correct some of the errors that I'm hearing and seeing in the media. Now, let me see if I could go on the race here. We have here on uh, Pratt Institute libraries, right? And they're giving the distinction between race and ethnicity and nationality. Now, here we have the, let me see if I could share my screen with you so that you could see what I am actually reading from. And I apologize for not having a video this morning. This is an audio presentation, right? So please bear that in mind. And I apologize. And sometimes perhaps I'll just, you know, when I am not in the capacity to do so, I'll just share, you know, the audio with you so you can have a video out, right? Because it's important for you to learn about these things. So we have introduction and definitions here, and it's coming from the Pratt Institute libraries. And it says race, ethnicity, and nationality or nation origin are often used synonymously, but mean different things. Across history and culture, these three definitions have overlapped, adding to their confusion as these largely abstract concepts have very genuine real world influence. For more information on the definitions, and we shall be looking at them. So let us look at the definitions here. Race, refers to the physical characteristics that define a person as a member of a specific group. Things that define race can include skin color, hair color, and texture, eye color, facial features, and physical build. Race is a social construct, so that is what you make of it. There is no scientific understanding of what race is, right? It is just a social construct. And what defines who belongs to a particular race can vary. So it is subjective. It is not an objective sort of analysis, right? The idea of race, quote unquote, originated from anthropologists and philosophers in the 18th century. We must understand that, you know, the Europeans created that construct because they wanted to feel as if they were superior, which they are not, right? Because of their low self-esteem and they lack the a self, a clear self-identity self of who they are, they wanted to project onto people what they thought of themselves. And that's what often people do, right? When people have defects, they tend to want to project it onto another person who use geographical location and phenotypic traits like skin and color to place people into different racial groupings. Now, so that is what they, they did, all right? So um, I think here the modern day definition of race does not include any biological or genetic component. Right. So we have now ethnicity, cultural characteristics that define a person as being a member of a specific group and can include language, accent, religion, styles of dress, hairstyles, social customs, food and dietary preferences or restrictions. And it's interesting that in the 19th century, 19th century America, for example, when you have the, you know, the age of W. Du Bois and other Americans, they tended to, when they're writing, they talked about the Irish race, they talk about the Nigerian race, they talk about the British race, whatever, right? They did not refer to that as, you know, merely being of a skin tone or a color of your skin, but actually the culture from which you actually emanate, right? From which you emerge. Now, nationality is a legal sense of grouping or belonging, rather, to a specific political nation state, and it can involve citizenship, birthright, or naturalized and national origin, right? Now, so you were obviously born in that country or you were naturalized, as many 
Americans are, right? Who have traveled from all over the world and they have naturalized and have become naturalized citizens of the United States or wherever you go. You might decide to become a naturalized Dominican or a naturalized Trinidadian or a naturalized Jamaican because you were not born there, but by some aspect, probably through marriage or through work um, experience and opportunities, then you have garnered, as it were, another nationality, which is naturalized, not one in which you were born, you were born there, but for some reason and, you know, whatever um, way in which you might have sought becoming a naturalized citizen of any country. Now, in let us look at this where we had a conversation here on the Jimmy Dore show. And he's going to talk about, he's going to talk, he's be talking with Nick Cruz. And Nick Cruz is an African American. And the title of the video is that Don Lemon Kamala is not African American, right? So Don Lemon is suggesting, and Don Lemon was a previous reporter on CNN. Now, Don Lemon Lemon is a person who is ascribes to these, you know, left-wing ideologists, liberal ideologies, and the United States has some very weird ideal ideologies when it comes to identity. And I think that is going to be one of the downfalls of the United States, that people are not able to come together as a people, as an American race. They divide themselves and they put themselves into boxes, and these boxes are often delusional boxes, boxes that do not exist. But they think it exists, and you can't tell them that these boxes do not exist. The problem is when they want to force people to enter in these non-existent boxes, and people refuse to do that, and then they get angry, and they begin to use epithets and all sorts of invectives at people who do not subscribe to their nonsensical ideologies. But let's listen to what Don Lemon is saying, and then listen to what Jimmy Dore and Nick Cruz are saying on the Jimmy Dore show. All right? Please listen. I'll see you on tour in Las Vegas, Chicago, and Grand Rapids. In Chicago, it's stand-up and a live panel show. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for tickets, and make sure you go to jimmydoor.com. Here is Don Lemon, and I don't know who this woman is he's talking to. He's going to argue that Kamala Harris is not African-American. Now, you just said she wasn't raised by black people. Um, but her father was Jamaican, right? And her mother was yeah. Indi Indian, not American Indian. Yeah, she was but, raised by her mother. And she was raised by her mother. Okay. Yeah. In fact, her father disavowed her because Kamala Harris made a joke mocking her Jamaican family descent, uh, stereotyping them as pot, drug users, and her father, who was a Marxist intellectual, took great offense to that um, and said that their uh, their ancestors would be rolling in their grave if they saw that Kamala Harris essentially stereotyped their family as Jamaican weed smokers like she did, like she has done. So. She has no connection, and even then, and I and I have solidarity with the international uh, with black, international black people, but she wasn't raised in a black household, and that's just a fact. She was raised by an Indian mother, and she's Jamaican. So the the psyop trying to push uh, Kamala is being relatable to the black. You know, let's look at some of the assertions that Nick is making, and obviously, he's not aware of. The difference between the differences between nationality, race, and ethnicity, right? As most Americans are not. Now, the problem that he's facing here is saying that she's not black, whatever black means, because I don't know, you know, what black is, right? Because black is just a color, right? Black is doesn't have anything to do with with uh, with culture or with one's ethnicity. It's just a color, right? That people say that, oh, that person is black, but what does that mean? A person having a black skin tone does not mean that that is the sum total of who the person is, does not represent the culture of that individual, right? Because the person can be black and British, can be black and German, and, you know, you might not, so that person is not black because that person shares a British culture or is deeply immersed in a German culture. So we have to be careful in how we begin to describe people. Let us allow people to describe themselves, because oftentimes Sometimes we tend to think we know all that we need to know about people, but we don't. We can only know about people. What we know about people is just a minute aspect of what they have shared with us and what we have observed from them. But oftentimes what we have observed might not be true. Some of it might be true, but most of it sometimes, or some of it might not be true. Because only they can know who they are. 
right? We can't enter into private closets and know what people have in their private closets, can we, right? Now, he's suggesting also that she was not raised in a Black household. Her mother raised her. And to some extent, that is true because, you know, there was a divorce and they divorced early. Uh, we're not sure, you know, what age. I think it could have been when she was 10 or, you know, a little bit older when her parents actually divorced. Another error that he's making, Jamaica and being Jamaican is a nationality, right? It is not, it, yes, we can talk about the Jamaican culture, but the Jamaican culture encapsulates a number of different peoples who have been there, right? So you have the Asians, you had the Europeans, you have Africans who went there. And that is why we have the professor um, Rex Natterford, a very prominent Jamaican intellectual. I mean, he says that the typical Jamaican is part Asian, part European, and part African, but quintessentially Jamaican, right? So the fact of the matter is that being Jamaican does not mean that you're Black, as he's trying to suggest, right? Because Jamaicans come in different varieties, and the culture is a potpourri of different the different ethnic groups that went there, the different national groups that went there. Something that you know, this guy has to understand. Even in Africa, where people say, oh, it's a black continent, people don't think themselves like that, right? It is the Europeans who have actually, um, you know, foisted that sort of philosophy on to Africans. But Africans do not embrace that concept of being in this box. They say that they're Nigerians or they're Ethiopians and they are, you know, even the Europeans, and that is why they had wars when you had the Italian Americans, the German Americans, the Irish Americans. When they went to America, there was a lot of war between the British Americans who thought that they were the nativists and they were the authentic was community in America and that others should not have come. Because those who were coming from Ireland and from Italy and all these countries and Poland, they were Catholics and they had a different culture. Now, you could look at their the hue of their skin their skin tone and say, well, they're all whites, but it is not so. They had a lot of different, you know, fights and, you know, um, uh, you know, warfare in terms of their identity because they did not see themselves as relatives. It is because of the racism in America, the fact that this is a social construct and the American ruling elites, they did not want to have working class peoples in America, the ones who, you know, the Irish and the Italians and the Polish and all of the and Blacks coming together against them, they came together and say, well, whites should be, you know, this is a white, these are white people. And then we have Blacks and it is us against them, right? So eventually we saw the Italians who were, you know, looked upon as being a repugnant group. In fact, it's on record where, you know, a lot of British Americans or what you call members of the WASP community thought the Italians were even worse than, than slaves, right? They did not like them. They, they you know, they were repulsed by these people. The WASP community was repulsed by the Italians and the, the Irish and other amongst other people. So when, you know, you have these guys making these very ludicrous statements, right? That's grounded in ignorance. And it's time for Americans to learn the humanities. The humanities need to be resurrected in schools from Americans to understand the difference between race, ethnicity, and also nationality. The two are not, they're all not interchangeable and should not be used interchangeably as we are actually doing right now. It's time for us to wake up and understand that. So her being born, um, raised in a, Indian fam, um, you know, household has nothing to do with anything. Many Italians were raised in Italian households, so are they not Americans? Many Germans were raised in German households, are they not Germans? Or are they not Americans, I, I, I should say, right? Many Americans were raised in Nigerian homes, are they not therefore Americans? This is America. America is also a potpourri of different nationalities, ethnicities, and all of these you know, cultures, religions. And we've got to be very careful of putting people into one box. It's almost like saying that we're all Christians. It's the same thing. And I think this whole blackness and black, uh, you know, identity is almost like a cult-like following of, you know, a messiah. And we think that that sort of messiah is going to lead all black people to the land of milk and honey. And that is delusional thinking. 
that is delusional thinking and something that a lot of African Americans have to wake up to, right? But Kamala Harris is quintessentially America of Jamaican descent and of Indian descent. Her father was Jamaican, which means also, if you look at him, he also is mixed, right? So you can't put him, yes, he is Jamaican, as I'm suggesting, he is he he is the epitome of what Rex Zetterford, Professor Rex Zetterford said, that he is part African, part European, part Asian, but quintessentially, quintessentially Jamaican, right? So Jamaican does not mean a race, as many Americans like to think, or an ethnic group per se. We've got to be careful about what we don't know. And a lot of what we know is what we see on television and what is projected through this tourist industry, which is, you know, practically a nonsensical industry. All right, let's let's continue with what he's saying. Experience is completely false, especially considering she's directly responsible with locking black men up, keeping innocent men in jail. She puts civil asset forfeiture, which studies show that uh, still around 65%, uh, 65 of people impacted by civil asset forfeiture are black men. And that's the policy that she puts to bankrupt our community. And she did it from the outside in, not from the inside, uh, looking uh, for the best for the uh, black community. And this is what black people knew about Kamala. We knew her, did not have reintroduced her. Yeah, and that might be so. I am not going to negate that Kamala Harris might not have done things that would have gone against, you know, stereotypical black people, people of African descent. She might have done and made some very, you know, bad decisions. But we must understand that most black people at that level do that. They do what their job requires of them to do. And I dare say, if Nick, um, Cruz had been in that position that he might have done. I'm not suggesting that he's, he he would have, but many do, right? I have, you know, went to Howard University, a black university, and you'd be surprised to see what these guys who talk so wonderfully about black people, what they do there, right? And how they, you know, fleece funds and do things and they, you know, even the way how they teach the, the students, they're very black and they talk about the black culture. And many of them would not even teach what needs to be taught, right? They would not even teach what needs. They, they did not empower their black students, but they preached. They, you know, they preached about you know this the wonders of the black culture, and yet their actions were far from it. So let's not think that because somebody, you know, identifies with a party a, a particular ethnic group. You know, let us say, for example, there could be an Italian American who, you know, arrives at that position, gets to that position, and they also betray their fellow Italian Americans. It's possible. Human beings cannot be, we cannot group people and say, this is not a church, right? Where we say we have these doctrines and this is a secular society and people are free to do whatever they want to do. Yes, it, they, it, it should come with consequences and we should call them out. So Kamala Harris should be called out with regard to her, you know, um, you know, erroneous judgments on some of the policies that she might have approved when she was prosecutor in um in California. But we cannot say because if she thinks she's black, and I think she's saying that because that is what Americans know. You, you're either black or Asian or European. And so she has to sell herself as somebody. You know, and that's the whole thing. You, you're you going to America and you have to sell yourself. You're either black or you're, you know, white or you're this and they have all of these boxes that you need to fill up. People just want to know that they're, you know, they're Spanish or they're, you know, Colombian or they're, you know, um, whatever, Nigerian. They don't want to have to say, well, Nigerian, but black or Nigerian, but poly, whatever, Polynesian and all of these nonsensical things that you have to fill in because America likes to put people into boxes, into their ignorant boxes, as it were, you know, because it is a sense, a sign of American ignorance. And America has not grown where that this is concerned. As a result of that, it is annoying speaking to an American when they do not understand, you know, identities, that identities, you know, cross different lines and that there's, it's complex. 
right? So somebody who has a, an Italian mother and a Nigerian father. You just can't say the person is black or the person is only Nigerian or the person is only Italian, right? There is a mixture and it's complex. It's more complicated than we think. What we should do is to accept people based on the character of their, the con not, the, not, not on the color of their skin, but the content of their character as Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. suggested. We cannot continue to look at people's color and cultural dynamics and begin to say that this is who they are, right? Because it might not be, right? An Italian who journeys from Italy to America might, after many years, decide that he wants to adapt an American cultural values and norms, which Americans like people to do, right? And well, if that is what he or she wants to do, then that person is free to do that, right? That person should be free to do that. And it's not for you to tell the person how, what they should do or who they should identify themselves with. Very important that Nick Cruz and Jimmy Dore understand this. Uh, a great introduction. The liberal class on that we used to reintroduce Kamala Harris, that's not going to work. She ran before and only got 1% Black support because we did our research and saw the, the massive damage she did to the Black community. She puts for sentences for nonviolent offenders because she believed in slave labor. She was a big advocate of slave labor. So she, she kept innocent men in jail, uh, advocating for harsh interpretation of law so she can, so the state can benefit from slavery. The okay, now some of what he's saying might be true in terms of the prison system does encourage slave labor and they promote slave labor and that is why they want a lot of black men to be there to continue that tradition of slavery. So slavery didn't end as many people think. It ended in 1865 when uh, African Americans, well, 1863 rather, when African Americans received the first um, proclamation of em emancipation. It did not end there. However, he needs to understand that Kamala Harris, she was just being the what? The, the ones impl who implemented what Joe Biden had actually formulated. In fact, Joe Biden formulated that crime bill under the first black president, Bill Clinton, right? Because many people regarded Bill Clinton as this, the first black president. They, black Americans thought that he was their president and they loved him and they really, um, you know, are excited about him and what he has done in their community. But they don't understand that he did most, most of the things that Bill Clinton did went against African-Americans or black people, the stereotypical black people, right? So she was just implementing, she could not go back, right? In her position and change the laws that were already implemented, that were already on the books. And that is why we need to follow what's happening, the policies. Don't look at race and identity as you're looking at in colored skin. Look at the policies that successive administrations are actually crafting and implementing. Right, that they're actually crafting and implementing because these are going to affect us. And we're seeing right now that the anti-crime bill that was Joe Biden's intellectual property, they are actually impacting or they impacted a lot of Black people. And Black people went back and they voted for him. That's Joe Biden in 2021, 2020 rather, in the elections of 2020, a lot of Black people, yes, a lot did not, but a lot of them did. Because according to them, they were you know, democracy was on the ballot. Not understanding that democracy and slavery cannot cohabit in the same room. They cannot live in the same room. Right? But many of you, and I'm sure perhaps, perhaps Nick Cruz, I don't know, but a lot of black people did vote for the for, for Joe Biden and the Democratic Party. Right? A lot of them still. And they're very, very loyal to that Democratic Party. Nobody knows why. I guess because they do not read enough to understand that the Democratic Party is anti-Black, as they think they are. The Democratic Party has never been, you know, pro-Black. Right? They have always been anti-Black. Both parties. The, the biggest uh, enemy of the Black community you can possibly ask for is someone like Kamala Harris. Well, here's, here's what Doc. You know, what is this Black community of which we speak? Right? What is this Black community? What is this Black community? Because the Black community in America is diverse. 
right? And there's some people, you know, I taught at Howard University, for example, and some of my students did not really, uh, for example, connect. They weren't connected with the Black culture, and they were Blacks, as you think they are. Nothing about them that, you know, suggested that they were anti-Black. But they could not connect with that sort of some of the mentality that was at Howard. Some of them left. Some of my students left and said they cannot stay here because they were not educated in an environment where they had a lot of Black people and maybe some of the things they thought were not kosher with them. And they left and went to what we call predominantly white institutions. Right? I had a Haitian American young man that I taught at Howard University. And he came to Howard and just could not adapt to that sort of what you call the Black culture. Because for him, that's not his identity. Right? So we have to be careful about what we engage people in when we talk about this Black culture. Because there's no Black culture. There's no white culture, as Americans would like to say. There are different classes. We can talk about that. And you might have an educated class. You might have a poverty-stricken class. Yes, we have these classes that we need to look at. But to look at people's ethnic background and begin to put them into a box, right, then that's a problem. You know, I always say, I remember when I was, you know, I was tutoring this particular Black, um, so-called stereotypical Black uh, African-American girl um, at Howard University. And she was at the time in high school. And here comes a black Nicaragua, right? A guy from who is from Nicaragua, but is happens to be black, just like myself and, and her. And when she saw that we were communicating in Spanish, because he came and he started talking to me and I spoke to him in Spanish. And she was sort of, you know, bemused. The African American my African-American tutee was bemused. She was like, what's going on here? I'm looking at a Black guy who is speaking Spanish because her understanding of what Blackness is means that you should not have the capacity to speak another language, but perhaps English and to speak the African-American vernacular English and to, you know, that perhaps is, that's her concept of Blackness, right? When that's not true. Right? That is not true. And when we talk about black and brown people, let me just, before I get into the black and brown, it's because that's also nonsense. John Lemon had to say, this was, uh, I don't know exactly when this was, but it's a while ago because he was still on CNN. So here we go. When you see her, you see her blackness, but she is also South Asian. Her mom is South Asian and her dad is Jamaican. April, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me, let me listen. Yeah. More power to her. And I think what? that's great. That is, that should be enough. Listen, it is enough that she's a black woman. We are not a monolith. No, 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 no. Exactly. That is it. We are not a monolith. And being South Asian and being Jamaican are not race, right? It's a culture, ethnicity, but it's not a race. That is what people need to understand. You also have black Indians from India, right? So... What are we going to talk? So if you say a black person, real black, dark-skinned person from India, is that person not Indian? Or if you see a black, dark-skinned person coming from Germany, is that person not German, quintessentially German, who uses the language na as a native does, and who behaves and eats the food and share everything German? Is that person not German? And we have this thing when the, you see, for example, Americans go to Jamaica and they see a white Jamaican or they go to Haiti and they see a white Haitian and they're beginning to, they're confused because their understanding is that the people there are all dark skinned and they're running around and that is what they think Jamaica needs to be. And that is not the reality. And most Americans do not live in the reality because of this sort of, they, you know, the, the, as, as, you know, W. the boy suggested. The problem of the 20th century is the color problem. The color line, that is going to be the problem of the 20th century. And it is still the problem of the 21st century. Americans have not educated themselves and have not become a little bit more sophisticated when it comes on to racial identities or cultural identities or ethnic identities. 
They have not. And they refuse to learn about it, even when they're living in other countries. You see them grappling with these false notions of what race is. And when you educate them, they refuse. They don't want to learn about these things because their minds are so much indoctrinated that they can't get themselves out of this narrow way of thinking. No, 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 I think, you, I think you're not, you're not hearing what people are saying. The people who are saying is she black enough, that's bull, that's BS. But to, to, to want a distinction to say, is she African American or is she black or is she, whatever. That what's, there is nothing wrong with that. There is a difference between being African American and being black. Um, people, people, Latino people are people of color, but they're not black. They're brown people. She's a okay. woman of color. And so this is a problem now. All of these people are Americans. Kamala Harris is an American. She was born there. So she is, right, a de facto American. Right? So what is this problem now about wanting whether she is African American or she is black? It has nothing to do with anything. What we should be measuring her, you know, from the, the, the sort of measuring stick that we should use we should be using is whether or not she's competent whether or not she is going to defend the constitution of the united states and she's going to implement policies that will move the country forward these are the things that we ought to be looking at and not to be spending huge amount of time talking about whether somebody's african-american or black because it has nothing to do with with anything and what is the difference between African American and being black, according to him? Right? Some people are suggesting, oh, those who have been through Jim Crow and those who have been through slavery, their parents have been through slavery. As I suggested here, that many of the slaves in North America came from other Caribbean nations, be they Jamaica or Barbados, or perhaps I think some from the Bahamas. Right? So they did not necessarily, you also have lots of Haitians who went to uh, to fight with America along with Americans during the Revolutionary War, right? They were sent there because the French wanted the British to weaken the British Empire, not because the French wanted to support Americans at the time, but because you know the French wanted to weaken the British Empire as it was as the British Empire at the time was one of their major competitors. So Haitians went there and they fought in the Revolutionary War. And I'm sure there are slaves who might have gone there too, because that's how they, you know, they exchanged and uh, and they bought slaves from wherever they could get slaves from, right? So this cons this understanding of uh, you know African Americans are the only ones, and you are how do you know? How do you know? Many Black Americans don't even know their ethnic group and from whence they came. They can't trace perhaps that some of their ancestors might have come through Jamaica or might have come through Barbados. Very difficult for them to understand that, right? Very difficult for them to understand. They don't have any knowledge about it, but they rather attach themselves, tell themselves to some sort of ideology of which they do not know what they are speaking. But let's, let's continue to hear the nonsensical conversation. She is a black woman. Okay, that's fine. I agree with that. I agree with that. But is she African American? No, 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 no. But is she African American? That is a difference. There's nothing wrong with that. No one is trying to take care of from her. I think you're falling. I think you're falling into a trap with that. All she had to do was say, "I am black, but I'm not African American." Now that is inconsequential. And when you listen to this Don Lemon guy, you really wonder where is his mind? Where is his intellect? And these people just read off a teleprompter. That's what they're known to do. They don't read and they don't understand the world in which they live. They only see the world through the uh, teleprompter that they, the, the words that they have been given because they're told to say what they, what they, what they say. The sad thing is that they control the minds of many Americans who themselves do not try to understand the world in which they live and that it is more complex. In fact, Americans don't even understand the nation, the, the very country in which they live, right? Here we are in the 21st century, 
and people have this nonsensical and infantile understanding of what an African American is or who a black person is. Because these are social constructs. These are social constructs and they have nothing to do with anything. Nothing to do with anything. And these are the persons who, you know, they put Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on a pedestal. And wh why don't apply his statement that it is best if we judge a person based on the content of their character as opposed to their skin hue, their, their, their the complexion of their skin? Right? Judge her based on the content of her character. Her being of Indian descent or of Jamaican descent have nothing to do with anything. It is the content of her character. Yes, as a means of knowledge, you can educate your, your audience to say that her father hailed from Jamaica and her mother from India, from Southern India, right? But to be having a conversation about who is Black and who is African-American is really, really childish. Right, and it is grounded in ignorance, and the entire world is seeing how stupid the American public is. That's it. I'm not falling into. Let me, let me, let me, let me finish. Hold on, I'm not falling into a trap by that. When, when, when she goes down her lineage, many Africans landed on in Jamaica and all these other Caribbean islands. So she could indeed Jamaica's be not African -American. American mixed with others, but she Jamaica's is Jamaica's not America. But she is a black woman. She was Jamaica born there. Jamaica did not come out of Jim Crow. Oh, I'm just saying. Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz. I'm not talking about Ted. You know, this is quite interesting. One of the things too is the whole matter of when, you know, black people, they see other, what they deem to be blacks. Some of which, if they should go and look, they will see that they came, their parents also hailed from the Caribbean or from Africa. You know, when I taught again at Howard University, went there too, I was always flabbergasted by a lot of the, the students I spoke with and, you know, whom I thought were 100% African-Americans. And when they came to the office to speak to me and to, you know, to interact with me, you know, they say, oh, my parents were from Barbados or from Nigeria or from Jamaica. You would not be able to tell the difference, right? Because they were first generation, second generation African-Americans or Jamaicans or whatever you want to call it. But they were, they had adopted the culture of their new home and nothing is wrong with that because people have always migrated. And you and and identities are flexible, right? It's not a monolith. We're free to adapt and to adjust to any cultural. And America, for the for a number of years, well, well I guess since its inception, have always this has always discouraged this sort of cultural fluidity, and they do not like people to study and to learn languages that would help them to broaden their horizon of the world. They want to just be fluent in this American vernacular of English and think that that is the English of the world. And this is the same thing that they're thinking about their cultural identities, about their ethnic connections. They think that they should define what English is. They should define what a person, what blackness is, what a person's ethnicity is. And that is stupidity, right? That is stupidity. So uh, you can always cut on Don Levin to get to the heart of the superficial bullshit. Right. So that is, yeah. And, 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 and sorry about that. He likes to curse. And I hate when Jimmy Dore curse. I've sent him you know, numerous messages. Try to leave out these, uh, what do you call it now, these expletives from your conversation. You don't have to be cursing. In Americans, you don't have to be cursing on the, on the, use your words appropriately. You don't have to come online cursing. Right, there are appropriate words that can be used when you are having in important conversations like these. Right, so all right, so let's go now, and we are going to be looking at something else so we can look because Kamala Harris, as I'm suggesting, is American first, right? Of Asian, if you want to say, or Indian, of Jamaican Caribbean descent. Nothing is wrong with that. Most Americans are not 
100% Americans, right? They're coming from another country. Their parents hailed from their grandparents, ancestors hailed from another country. America is an immigrant nation. Everybody knows that by now, right? So you can't claim to be any authentic American. You might be more American than the person than the Jamaican or the, the Italian who has just come there. But if the person was born there and they were educated there and they were immersed into the norms and the social mores of America, they are quintessentially American, not because they might have gone to Great Britain and spent some time there because their parents were ambassadors or teachers or scientists or whatever they are or were. It takes away from their Americanness. That is also stupidity. It's not because Kamala went with her mother to, to Canada. We don't know if her because she went there because her mother had been divorced and then she got a very you know lucrative job opportunity in Canada. Whatever the reason was, it does not detract from the fact that she is quintessentially American because she was born and raised to a great degree there. And then she moved from Canada and she went back to Howard University and she's lived all her years there. So what is this problem with her brief stint in in um in Canada, right? Does it take away, does it subtract from her Americanness? It sure does not. It broadens her world perspective and makes her a better human than many people who are criticizing her. And I'm no Kamala Harris's fan, as I've just indicated to you. Right? Now, this is a an article that came from the CBS news. All right. So let me see if I can share my screen and share some of the thoughts here. Hope I can finish this, this thing because, you know, we need to have a discussion, a very open discussion and transparent, as it were, on what this concept of race and ethnic ethnicity and nationality is because Americans are really dumb when it comes down to that. Now we have not all Black people are African-American. Here's the difference and somebody here is suggesting there. Black Lives Matter protests have opened up conversations about the history of privileged racism and the lived experiences and identities of Black people in America. Now, the distinction between Black and African American has become a prominent conversation on social media. So it's all about ideology. Many people often default to African American out of a desire for either political correctness or politeness. The two terms are often used interchangeably, but that isn't always accurate. And it's important to understand the nuance when discussing race, both in America and on a global scale. You know, why should we have noise on a global scale when Americans don't know what they're talking about? There are Black people in every continent who are all over the world, explained Professor Celeste Watkins Hayes, an African-American studies professor at Northwestern University. African American is nation specific. <laughs> Who says that? Oh, it's subjective, but that is what the learned professor is suggesting. We are typically talking about Black people who are born in the United States, right? So, who are Black people? <laughs> that would is what I would. And how does he define who is Black? Okay, because you know when what's his name, professor, the professor from. Is it Lewis, um, uh, the professor from Harvard University? I'm forgetting his name now. It's Lewis. I know his first name, but I can't remember his last name. All right. Um, but he had this ethnographic, you know, studies that he did about the genetic backgrounds of most African Americans. And, you know, he found out in his research that over 75% of what we call Black people, Black Americans, you know, have white blood or they're mixed, either white genetics or DNA or or genetics that, you know, from other ethnic groups. So to suggest, therefore, what is this blackness? And we hear that in America that once you just have a drop of blackness in your blood, in your DNA, it means that you are black. That is a sort of narrow perspective, but it really is ridiculous because what if you have other drops? of other DNAs, of other ethnic groups within your DNA system. Who, who are you? So how do we define Blackness when over 75% of African-Americans or what you call Black Americans are actually mixed? How do you define Blackness? 
right? That's why it has to be a social construct that is built on subjectivity versus objectivity. It has absolutely no objectivity therein. What that means is for a long time in our country's history, Black people were mostly direct descendants of enslaved Africans. Watkins Hayes described the adoption of the term African-American as a very deliberate move on the part of Black communities that signify our Americanness, but also signify this African heritage. Now, what about the white, what you call indentured slaves who went to America? Are they Black too? Because their ancestors were enslaved in America, right? How are we going to really get through these sort of arguments? And that's why we have to have a broad concept, a broad understanding of history. Because if we don't, then we are going to find ourselves confined to these narrow intellectual spaces. Over time, immigration to the United States increased and people who identify as Black in America were also likely to be first and second generation immigrants without a direct connection to the history of slavery in this country. But then there is always that fluidity in terms of the slave ships going from Jamaica to the United States, have always been from Barbados to the United States. So from America's inception, you've always had immigration because America, again, is an immigrant country. So Blacks have always been coming from other countries. In fact, I think the majority, as I suggested before, and some historian can correct me, of the slaves that went to America did not come directly from Africa. They came vis-a-vis -vis other countries, particularly countries in the Caribbean. Right? When we look at South Carolina, for example, a lot of the descendants there are from Barbados. So we've got to be careful how we approach and we deal with the history and people's identities or their lack thereof. And I think many Americans, I think these conversations are held to really disempower Black people, what we call the surgical Black purse, and not to empower them. Because this has no, this discussion has no form of empowerment. So if we think about what's, ha what, what, what's happened post 1960s, what you've seen is rising immigration among Black people who were not born in the United States. People who are coming from Africa, from the Caribbean, from Europe, who identify as Black, but don't identify as African-American. He needs to understand, this person who, this professor at the um, Northwestern University, right? A very prestigious university in the United States. And yet listen to the nonsense that this guy is talking about. Because we understand that Blacks have always been coming, going to the United States, have always been, right? Through the whole slave trafficking and also other, through other job opportunities, they've always gone there. What happened in 1924, was it 1924 specifically, when you know there was a uh, sort of barricade that was put upon the immigration of Black people? America did not want, because it was the beginning stages of the eugenics movement, and they did not want the nation to be flooded with lots of Black people. So there was, you know, there was a sort of blockade that was put on the immigration of Italians also and other, you know, Southern Europeans that Americans deemed to have been inferior also. They could not gain access to the nation, you know, or they, their immigration was significantly reduced, right? But in the 1960s, 1965, that sort of blockade was lifted, right? And then you had also another you know, um, wave of migration of people of color coming from these countries that America deemed before to have been inferior based on their narrow and inferior perspective, right? So that is what this professor needs to understand. Now, this is person is saying, I am black and within that, I am a Jamaican born African, African American man. So he's saying that he's black, whatever that is. And because a lot of Jamaicans too are mixed in terms of even when the blackest of the black have some sort of, you know, genetics or DNA that goes back to different ethnic groups, right? It's because again, of years of the practice of slavery. But I call myself and I, I identify as black, he explained. Black doesn't have any identity. It's just a color. I've had to take on different identities at different periods of my life. But my blackness is the overarching umbrella of those different flavors of my identity. 
nonsense. But look at this, what he's saying here. I've had to take on different identities at different periods of my life. When you are in politics, even when you go to a job interview, you have to sell yourself according to what your boss wants to sell yourself as. Many of us know that, you know, a lot of times we're not interested in that job, but, you know, you want the job, you need some money, so you, you sell yourself according to what they think they want. And you tell them that you've had these experiences and, you know. So Kamala Harris and all politicians in the United States, including so-called European Americans, have to sell themselves as lovers of Black people, even though they might not be. You had Joe Biden, for years he sold himself as an advocate of African-American and Black people's liberty, which, of course, when you look at the history of, um, you know, Joe Biden, he has never really been lovers of Black people or a passionate advocate of Black people or African peoples. He has never been. But he had to sell himself as that if he wanted their votes. And that is what they all do including the Kamalas or any Black person who might go to that office. You've got to really identify with that community. Barack Obama in 2007, he knew that he was not culturally African-American himself, but he had to sell himself as that. So we saw him going to church and he's selling you know, himself as a, you know, playing basketball and the stereotypical understanding of who uh, a Black American is or is not, right? Now, Labiche's experience is just one example of the complexities of Black identities, especially in the United States. Some people originally um, from other countries who live in the United States accept African American because of its cultural and historical roots in the Black experience that is specific to this country. African American technically isn't even what I am, he said. I am a Jamaican-born Black person, but I have taken on this label of African American because of where I live. Now, a lot of prominent African-American leaders have hailed from other countries, and they are very much proud of these Black Americans, and they call them African-Americans. Um, you know, Malcolm X, his mother was actually Grenadian, right? So, and as we say, a lot of children take and ascribe to the culture of their mother, because the mothers are generally the nurturers, and they're going to pass on their foods and their identities and their cultural norms and mores to their children, whether we like it or not, right? So I'm sure that um, Malcolm X's mother had a lot of, you know, influence on Malcolm X, and definitely she did, because she was also a Garveyite. She was, she was a follower of Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey is also another prominent Though born in Jamaica, another prominent African American. In fact, you would not even think that Marcus Garvey is Jamaican if it's not told in in um, African American history, because they claim him more than even Jamaicans as their own, right? So, are you going to suggest now that Marcus Garvey, if he were to become tomorrow, let's say he was alive and he we had the same Marcus Garvey who was passionate of you know for Black liberation and the struggles and all of that? Let us say that he had become a politician, would you disclaim him as not being Black enough, African-American enough, because he was running for, for the presidency or whatever position he was running for? A lot of African-Americans, even including the W. Du Bois, some of his ancestors came from Haiti, right? So if we should go back into the genealogies, the lineage of lots of African-Americans, we're going to see that they were not original. You know, no Black American in any way was originally from, from the United States. They all came from different countries. So are they not African-American enough or Black enough? I think that Black people in America, people of African descent, are confusing themselves, and they are going to realize that the more they do these things, they're disuniting the African-American community, as it were. They're not empowering their people, right? We should be saying that we are all Black here, irrespective, because that is what America has done to us. And since they have put us into a box and we just have to stay there and try to fight and to educate them about who we are, but until we are in a you know system of power, then we can't educate them because they they won't listen to us, right? Because we are weakening the community by engaging in these infantile discussions, right? These layers of racial identity can be extremely personal and nuanced. 
There are some Americans who don't identify as both and some who prefer Black over African-American because they can't actually trace their lineage, right? And many Amer African-Americans cannot also trace their lineage, right? Because it was a system that was built in obscurity, right? The slave system was built in obscurity. So how are they going to know whether their forefathers, slaves came from Jamaica or from Barbados or from another Caribbean country? Right? They won't know. Some might know, but the large majority will not know. That is what we have to understand. Oh, I did not share my screen. Oh, Lord, I did not share, but I think you would have, you know, I did not share my screen with you. But this is an article from which I read. Um, not all Black people are African Americans. And yeah, so this is what I read from. I perhaps did not share my screen. So we have the layers of racial identity can be extremely personal and nuanced. There are some Americans who would identify as both and some who prefer Black over African American because they can't actually trace their lineage. Black is often a better default that recognizes and celebrates the race, culture, and lived experiences. What is Black culture? Nothing. Empty. Of people all over the world. Even in Africa, there's no Black culture. There's the Nigerian culture. And even within the Nigerian culture, you have different ethnicities, right? What you call tribes. The move that you see now towards Black is really to recognize the global nature of Blackness. <laughs> Whatever that Watkins Hayes said. Nonsense, right? Absolute nonsense. But, you know, he feels important, so you have to give him his, his credit, his due respect. Now, so I think that there that is the more universal term, right? There's no universal blackness, right? There is absolutely no universal blackness. Now, let's look at something else so we can end our um, discussion, right? End this video. And we have here um, Kamala Harris' parents, all about her mom, uh, Shyamala, uh, Gopalan and dad, Donald J. Harris, right? So let us look at who these people are and then we begin to assess who they are. So we have this, let me see who they are. So we have Kamala Harris's parents, Donald J. Harris and Dr. Shahamala Gopaland. All right, it's interesting that they're using doctor here and he's also a doctor, Well, he's a medical doctor. She was one, she was a surgeon but he is a PhD doctor, came to the United States to pursue their dreams, but never envisioned a future where their daughter would one day become vice president. Um, so this was when she was becoming vice president and they are saying that she is of Jamaican and Indian descent. Now the pair, which is Kamala Harris's parents, the pair first met in 1962 while attending a study group for black students and their connection was instant according to the New York Times. Just a year later, they were married. The couple welcomed daughter Kamala in 1964 followed by daughter Maya in 1967. While Kamala's parents pursued their careers after graduation, relocating to the Midwest where Donald landed his first teaching job, their marriage fought her. And by 1972, they filed for divorce. Shamala, or Shamala, hope I'm not mispronouncing her name, moved back to Northern California and took on the primary responsibility of raising their children and became the most influential person in Kamala's life, right? So she's suggesting that she's more Indian than she's Jamaican too. Right? And she has all rights to do that. A lot of Jamaicans also were asking, why is she not, why is she disclaiming her father's heritage? That's her choice. And a lot of times that I'm saying the politics, that is what you have to do. Right now, she probably is being sold as being more black than Asian, right? That is what they also do. If they think that they need black votes, they're going to sell her as a black person. If they think that they need more Asian or Indian votes, then they're going to sell her as an Indian. That is the American culture. It has always been and will ever be the American culture. You're sold. You are just an object. You are being objectified. And that is why I don't engage people in understandings of race and, you know, and stuff like that, particularly in America, because of the ignorance one and that people are trying to objectify you, right? When they're looking at the color of your skin and begin to think that that is a subtotal, sum total of who you are, it means that they are objectifying you as they did to the slaves. 
So we have to what? To free, to emancipate ourselves from mental slavery. That is very important. So I end this video by saying that Kamala Harris is quintessentially uh, American, right? While she is of Jamaican and Indian descent. She is an American politician. Stop talking about this blackness and this African American. She has found herself in a very complex and nuanced position in which she can't afford to say that she's not Indian or can't she afford to say that she's not Jamaican. And she can't say also that she's an African American. She shares all of these sort of cultural dynamics, right? And ethnic you know, background. So we need to educate ourselves. We can't just say that people, this is just one, they're this one thing. It's like you're saying that they're monolingual and many Americans just like to be monolingual. They just want to speak in the, the vernacular of American English, right? Because that is the English that they think should be spoken and the entire world should speak that sort of, you know, accented English. Because if you don't sound with this American accent, it means therefore that oh, you don't know English or something is wrong with you, right? When they are the ones who are living in that sort of narrow world, right? You can be black, as they are suggesting. I don't believe in that term, but let us say that that's what is used in the world. You can be black and Jamaican. You can be black and African-American. You can be black and Nigerian. You can be black and British. You can be black and German. All of these fluidities exist. They are no, they are more nuanced than we think, right? And that is why I say a person's language, culture, um, a language, culture, and nationality are what predominate. And in some cases, of of course, religion also predominates and defines who you are. Particularly when you have religions that are, you know. That, that is what the nation state is all about, like in, in most Muslim countries, right? But even so, there are different cultures within the Muslim world. We can't afford ourselves to be so narrow to think that, oh, Kamala is not black, she's also black. Oh, Kamala is not African-American, she's also African-American. Oh, Kamala is not Jamaican. She's not Jamaican and she's not Indian. She is of those descent, but she's not those she might share some cultural dynamics and aspects and characteristics of these cultures because her parents are but she is not because if she if you're calling her jamaican there's no american right because americans you know had gone there from different countries and they had the, they've had their children there and many of these children all of these children identify as americans irrespective of their parents you know country of origin Grow up, Americans. It's now time for you to grow up and to start having serious conversations about what is happening in America. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you like and you share and you subscribe and that you will try as much as possible to engage in adult-like conversations. See you then. All the best. Bye.